Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. In this week we want to talk about how we can use the JSON serializer to use our JSON that we have uh, somewhere into a typable model-based um, approach. So you remember maybe our approach where we created the list with the persons. Today we want to um, serialize the JSON in a very easy way so we can use the JSON much better than before. So let's get started. So if you start the first time with the JSON serializable, you will find that as a package, of course, in pub.dev. So down here, we have it also under the Flutter favorites. But of course, you can also just search for it, like JSON serializable, and you will find the first result is a Flutter favorite most of the time. And here you see it is JSON serializable. So if we jump into that package, uh, give that package a like because it is great. And what you can see is it explains you in the readme again how you can use it. And there is one annotation that is very important that is JSON serializable, but we'll come to that later inside of the code directly. Then there are two nice little examples and a lot of information about how you can use it. And what JSON serializable does, it uses the power of build runner and the annotations to generate code snippets for to JSON and from JSON. And we will take these as informations and we'll work with that. So as always, we can go to the install part and just install it. But in that package, it is a bit specific, uh, problematic just to use that like that because the example is not complete in my opinion. The problem here is that we have also to use a script part where we run the build runner. And if you have never worked with it, it could be quite tricky. So in my opinion, you should jump inside of the package of the Dart package, uh, Dart Lang package with the JSON serializable. And down here you find the examples. And as you can see here, everything is explained much better because you have now which dependency you actually need because you need not only the JSON annotation and JSON serializable, but also the build runner. So I will take all of these dependencies and also what we have to note is this part here. So to, run, uh, to generate these files that we want to have when we have a JSON serializable is that pub run build runner build. And there is also another option where we don't build where we just run it single time, where we can also make a watch. So whenever you change something in your code base, in your model, it will just regenerate. But we will have a look later in the code. Okay, so now let's take the dependencies, go to the pubspec.yaml and add the dependencies to our project. If you don't familiar with that project, I already created a video called Basic Network Requests and I will just reuse that project for today and implement everything inside there. You find the description below and also in the info box you have the video. Okay, so we jump into the pubspec.yaml and as you see here, as always, we have a lot of um, comments, but what we are interested in are the dependencies. And then we will take a look, um, and when we take a look later uh, back, we have dev dependencies and we have also normal dependencies. The normal dependencies are dependencies that later in production code will be there. So in production code, this JSON annotation will be part of this project. But dev dependencies are a bit special because they will not be part of your final bundle. So you can add uh, the dev dependencies and they will get, rid, uh, get removed later if you build under release parts. Okay, so you see now that the numbers are getting yellow. So for me, I just update the packages always when I have a new project. And with that, we have the newest package versions here. What are all of these? Well, JSON annotation allows us to set these add annotations that we will need for our models. The build runner is the tool that generates us source code from Dart. And JSON serializable is the whole package with all the possibilities. If we remember and we jump into our model persons.dart, we can see we have here a lot of strings, right? And this is very, very, very difficult to handle. And additionally, it is also dangerous to use because it could be that I make a typo, that another developer makes a typo. And all that stuff is always very handcrafted and leads to problems and issues. And we want to get rid of that. If we remember the um, API that we used, the random people API, that would be this one or random user.me API, we can see we have here name and name consists of title first and last. Also we have a login, we have registered, we have an ID and also the picture. 
If we understand that right, as we have it here in the JSON, we don't want to always write all that stuff. So what we can do is we have first to annote this persons class as JSON serializable. So for that, we add the JSON serializable on top of it. And as you see, we have also different options like create to JSON, explicit to JSON and so on. But now we're just focusing on JSON serializable. First step is done. We imported JSON annotation and created the JSON serializable for this class. But of course, as you can see, the name is just part of it and contains another object that contains three different ways. So for that, I would change the persons class for us a little bit. First of all, I would call it persons model. And also what I want to do is changing the file name to person underscore model. And I do the refactor everywhere. But now the name consists itself out of an object, which is then the title first and last. So I will create a name model for that. Um, that sounds now a bit complicated, but uh, it will make sense later. And also I will create for the image URL also a class because it is also a subclass or an object with the thumbnail inside. So what I will do is I will create here picture model and I create a named file for that picture model dot dart. Okay, so what we will have is a class name model and a class picture model. Class name model and a class picture model. As we know, the name model consists out of title first and last. So what we will do is we go into our name model and say string first, string last, and I forgot about the title, string title. <clears throat> Additionally, we have also to create a constructor for it. So name model this.title, this.first, and this.last. And what we also have to do is we have to set this one also to JSON serializable. Because also the name model needs to be serializable. We don't want to do anything with that later. Okay, now we have to import in person.model the package from the name.model and we will work with the picture model and there we know we have a string of thumbnail. We create also a constructor for that and now we should get this back to a green state. Uh, and also we can see that the key of that phone number is phone and not phone number. So I will change also this in that area just to make sure that um, we are sure with the key values here. I will change just that to picture because that the key is matching with this JSON path. Okay, and now what I will do is I first comment this one out. And if we jump back into the um, package of the example, we should get here underneath the lip some examples. So for example, the example.dart. As you can see, there is this part with the example.g.dart. What is a part? So I will add that for now up here and say for us it is person model underscore model dot g dot dart. If we use this part here in front, we say that this class contains not only out of that what is written here, but also whatever is written inside of here. To make it more, uh, I will show you in a second how it exactly works. But for now, remember all of these information that are inside here can be accessed by the person model. And next step would be if we go down here, we have now to create a factory from JSON where we call a method called underscore dollar, which seems like it is a generated key for all the generated files and then an, a, a function name. And I will take these two lines here and copy them over to our person model. So we have now our factory with the person model. And here we have this dollars, uh, underscore dollar and person model from JSON. Don't mind if it's getting red now because we didn't have generated anything. So they will get red until we have generated this person model gdart file. So also down here, we have the person model to JSON. All right. So now if everything works well, I can remove that part because we don't need it anymore, but still we have a red part here and we didn't have generated this one, but we have to copy this information because name and picture is also serializable into the specific classes. So we add this here, make it to the name model from JSON 
and change also this part here from person model to name model. And also the last one to name model. And we do the same thing one last time for the picture and call it picture model. We copy, we have it here. And last but not least, here. So now in that case, all of these parts getting red and this is very sad, so let's fix that. Ah, and also for the picture model, we have also to add that part where we say now picture model, model.g.dart. And last but not least, here we have also to add the part in the name model, we say name model.g.dart. Okay, now we have to go to the terminal. And down here in the terminal, you can see that I have no nothing written inside yet. But now we want to run the build runner and let generate our classes. So for that, we have to enter flutter pub run because we are in a Flutter project and Serializable is working as a Dart package, we have to run Flutter pub and then we run whatever comes next, which is the build runner. And we say build. Now this will take a second to generate the files that we need inside of our model part here. So let's wait a second. All right. So you can see after 14 uh, actions are done and eight seconds runtime, we succeeded. That is a very good um, sign for us because if I click now here, we can see, oh, the pictures model was not generated. Ah, I forgot the JSON serializable. That is very important. And if you forget it, you get the same problem. And I just rerun the whole build thing. All right. So now we have the model g.dart and you can see here that it creates us two methods. One is the picture uh, returns as a picture model. The method called from JSON with the picture model, we give a JSON inside and then it returns as a new picture model where we return this JSON thumbnail. And also on the other side where we return a JSON, um, we give inside a picture model and then we return the correct JSON for it. So that is pretty handy. But now you can see all these files getting read. That means they want to get added to the GitHub repository. And I don't like that because it gives a lot of noise and people who are working in a project can run themselves this uh, build runner method. So what I will do is I will go into the git ignore file and add the star.g.dart. So all generated files getting now ignored and you can see that by that nice little yellowish color. Now we have that and also here's everything green. The name model is also green. So if we jump into our app for a second, whoops, here we go. We can see everything still running green. So if I run here, oh wait, we have a problem here. Ah, of course. So inside of our home screen, we have of course to verify that the name and everything is correct. But of course, I don't want to write now everything again with this DOS name, this, um, this everything. So I jump into the name model and create here a two string, an override. So I override the two string method. And what I will do in this overwritten two string method is just I return a string with the title, the first name and the last name. Voila. And of course, we can make that a bit shorter with fat arrow. And now we return when we call that two string method, the whole name with the title. So if we go back to our home screen. I can say now name to string. And now we create our name here as a text. And for the current person where we want to have the image URL, we have to access first the picture and then access the thumbnail. And last but not least for the form number, I think we just have to change it to phone. And if I save now, we take a look into our application. Everything works as expected before. And that is pretty neat because what we have managed now is that this stuff is typed, so strongly typed. We don't have to care about this from JSON and to JSON. And of course it um, brings the problem that we maybe have to create more models for it, but it um, takes out the problem that someone can make a writing mistake. So that is very handy and you should absolutely try it out yourself for different models with the JSON serializable. Another thing that I want to show you, if you are working with the person model and also other um, models, if you want to change something or add something, then you always have to run the build runner build, right? 
But what we also can do is instead of running build, we can run watch. And what happens now is that inside of this build runner, it watches all files and if they get changed, the build runner will execute again the build function. And with that, we regenerate our uh, source code as soon as we change something. So for example, our person model could get another value from the API, right? So we take a look into the API here in random user API. <clears throat> and what we also find is, for example, the um, we have the name, we have the email, for example. So let's identify if we can get the email by the serializable and then Let's have a look. So we go here, we say we get a string called email. We add it to our constructor here. And now, because our person has an email, we can go to the home screen and also generate, like instead of getting the name at the moment, we just want to have the email address. And now if I save command S, for example, we can see the build runner is executed immediately. Okay, so after we have hot reloaded the app, we can see that the email address is changed by the name. Uh, the name is changed by the email address. That is pretty handy because I don't have to rewrite all the strings. I don't have to care how the JSON has generated or how I create an object out of this JSON file. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I know I, that was a pretty deep uh, technical topic, but I hope you really get the um, benefits of that and you will use it in your next projects to make it much easier to work with JSONs, with API calls and all that stuff. So if you liked that video, please think about to give it a like, subscribe to my channel though, so don't you miss anything out. And I also write Medium articles that you could be interested in. So feel free to check out the video description below and we see us next week. Thank you for watching me. Till the next time. See ya guys.